This will do 240 volts in via the plug or the mains, the wall, the thing. When you plug, <laughs> this will do 240 volts via the mains to an infinite amount. It'll do down to 0 0.001 volts. It goes into millivolts via this. Is it Rytec or Ride Rice Rive? I don't know. Something or other. Fuck. This will do 240 volts in to an infinite amount of output, up to 5 amps. Uh, no, it doesn't. F doesn't. F***ing dickhead. This will do 240 volts input to approximately 75 volts, 5 amps output, but obviously anywhere up to 75 volts output via, I think this is a Ryden DPS8005. Um, obviously if you fit the smaller one it will go up to whatever um, voltage that you want it to go to. Anyway, so what you need is obviously the casing which I've already covered in just normal 3M, oh, no it's not even 3M, it's just cheap shit vinyl covering. Um, and the top obviously. You'll need the power supply itself, which I've already modified, I'll cover that in a sec. You'll need an 80mm fan, you'll need the Ryden DPS8005, which is the one I'm using here. Banana connectors, these screws I'll go into in a minute, and obviously a mains cable. So let's dig into it. The first thing you'll need to do is modify the power supply slightly. Um, Here's the voltage indicator which is usually hot glued in, well it was in mine anyway. The fan I already removed and tried to call it, uh, make it a bit quieter, didn't work so that's why I came up with this. Anyway, I'll take that out. That is easily removable, it's literally smothered in hot glue there. Anyway, take all the screws out as you would take the top off. Take the screws out of the side, which um, is to all the heat sinks, well the two heat sinks. Then take all these screws out, which is five. The five screws out of the board, one, two, three, four, and then one in the middle. And then this will lift out. Like that. Get rid of that. You need that for the time being purely because of the labelling on there so you know what outputs are what. Now, I can't emphasise enough how dangerous this is. These are 240 volt caps. If you touch them, it hurts. These things, unfortunately, once you've plugged them in, there's no isolation back on the mains purely because it's a shit design. <laughs> once you've plugged this in and then you unplug it, and then you plug, plug uh, once you've plugged this in and then you unplug it and if you touch the live and the neutral on there you get a shock off it because the caps are still charged so leave it 24 hours discharge it just to be 100 percent safe it, it doesn't take 24 hours but you know first thing you have to do is change the variable resistor on the current adjustment now this is a 5 is it a 5k this is a 5k pot um, I'll leave a link in the description for all these parts. Basically, you just it's just pin for pin. Uh, you can't get it wrong unless you're completely stupid. The yellow goes to the left one, and the black goes to the middle one, and the red goes to the right one as you're holding it that way. So that's just a 5k pot. This one here is for the fan speed. Now I noticed on, I think it was on there, does it say TP or something like that? It's basically for a thermistor. Now I don't know where the thermistor will actually go, it will go somewhere on here. Either one of the FETs and it will detect whether the FETs get in hot and then the fan increases. But on these, because they're cheap, it's disabled. If you want to add the feature rather than having the fan full full pelt all the time that track there you have to cut right in the middle there otherwise those two those two there are bridged so what you want it to do is go through the variable resistor rather than actually through that track there so you cut that track and then you put a resistor in series put a resistor in series 
and that's a 1k, yeah that one's a 1k resistor although it's not focusing that's a 1k resistor so you need a 1k resistor on the thermal part but you don't need it if you want the fan running full all the time and you need a 5k on the variable uh, variable current part of it. The other thing you need to do is because the wires aren't going to be coming out the front they're going to be coming out the back of here purely because this part is the front of the case you need to cut those um, there's actually bars between the between these here all you do is get some side cutters and you just cut them it's fine they don't snap off the fan I've got a Noctua 80mm fan uh, I chose a Noctua because I've got one and I chose an 80mm fan because I've got one uh, I could have used a 100mm fan 120mm fan is just too big although I could have used one but it might be a bit noisy I don't know but anyway this is a 3 pin Noctua I'm just not using the sense wire first thing to do is put the power supply in the casing like that then you get these are the existing mounting screws out of the case. All you do is you screw them in. Now because it's tricky, I'll then get my mains cable and you feed it through the back. Like that. And up the side. And you may have to get some pliers or something. You may have to get something just to lever it. Like I say, make sure this is discharged first because shoving metal things in here ain't going to go very well. And that goes up to the front. Now, if you look on here, we've got the live, which is the closest to me, then the neutral, then the earth. So. We've got the live, which is the brown, the neutral, which is the blue, and the earth, which is the green and yellow, what's it things. I always tin these up because otherwise it starts fraying and going everywhere, so it is best to tin them first. When you've done that, just push the wires down on the side, make it nice and tidy. Then you get the, this is the voltage readout for this and you simply put that in the front. Now if you want to hot glue it in you can do but this hasn't moved, I've, I've just left it in place. Uh, this one which is the 5k variable resistance goes on this side and it will only go in one way. The wires for the for the fan speed controller, they go to the right hand side pins here, it doesn't matter which way you put them around at all. So that only goes in one way, which is pinch them up with some pliers, or if you've got a socket, use a socket, it's better. So that's that done. Uh, centre the knob, so if you turn it all the way left, and then turn it all the way right, you notice that that is centre, vertical. And do the same with that one. So that is vertical, which is centre. So then you can put, put your knob on straight. You've always got to have a straight knob. Banana connectors. The way I've wired these banana connectors up is, literally, I've got the two tags that comes off the banana connector and soldered into the middle like that. It handles the 5 amps perfectly so don't worry about the current. Your banana plugs, take away, take everything off uh, literally because it's easier to put them in. Uh, you put the first piece in like that, you put that piece on there, you put the washer on there, you put the nut on and you tighten it up and you, if you've got pliers, use pliers, if not, use the proper thing called a spanner. <laughs> and I'll do the other one in the same way. I've got one of the negatives which I'll do in exactly the same way as the other side. 
And then the other banana connector. What I recommend you do then is do these two wires. Connect these up to the power supply because it makes it easier to get it in afterwards. So if you look on here, uh, the left hand ones are positive and then the right hand ones are negative. So we've got six connectors on here. So the first, the left hand three are positive, the right hand three are negative. So I'm going to get that one there. So that's the positive in. And this one here, that's the negative in. Then what you do is you get your positive on this side here, you put it onto the back of the banana connector, and you very carefully put the bottom one in. You see this is this is what I mentioned about discharging this thing first, uh, because if you're dropping nuts and stuff in it like that. And then you just get your pliers and you just pinch them up. So <laughs> Oh god. And you do the same with the negative. And then you get your ends. You turn all what's it screws things, loosely do them up. You don't want to over tighten them because otherwise you ain't going to get them off again. This is purely if you need to wrap wires around this rather than plugging them in the end, that's all. Now like I say, with that, I've tested that at 5 amps and it's fine. I don't it doesn't overheat, you don't get any or you don't get much voltage loss. So you get your ride and power supply, you plug that in. Now if you put the wires in afterwards the input and the output is actually stamped on there so you're fine with that. And you put that in there but you'll have to cut the tags off. It, the, the, the tags are ridiculously tight so I had to remove them. You put, take the tags off like that and when the top's on that holds that in place and it doesn't move. If it starts to move, just put a blob of hot glue on it somewhere. Get your fan. The fan blows inwards. That slots in there and it plugs in the fan port like that. Tidy the wires up. Get the top. Get some M3 screws, these are only M3 by 10 I think they are. And you tighten them up. So now when I plug this in, if I turn that down and I'll turn that down, so that's the fan down and the voltage down all the way. With the ride and this this bloody powered um, <laughs> with this ride and things, I think it needs about uh, max a minimum of six volts or nine volts or something. Uh, it's nine volts. I turn this up to. You're probably not going to be able to see it. I turn it up to the to whatever the maximum I'm going to be using, you know, about about 20 volts. So that's all I'm going to be using. But obviously, I've got an, I've got a, an 80 volt output that I can actually use. You set your voltage with the top button, where you can adjust the millivolts there, or you can just keep turning it or keep going up. It'll only go up to whatever the input voltage is. So with this one it'll go up to 25.2, there's 26.1 volts input and it'll only output 25.2 so you can't accidentally go over volts. Whatever you set that to, that's all that'll go up to minus a bit for overhead. So you've got that there and then your amps, you do exactly the same. That'll go up to 5.1 amps and then after you've done that you press on and off and then it'll start outputting with that, that green one there or that one that red turns green and then you've got your output voltage and your current there coming out of these ports 
So that's it, simple as that. It's very easy to build and invaluable. I've put three feet on it, uh, don't put four on because I found out that a 3D print is never level. So, job done. Oh, and of course you've got the output for the fan, which you can adjust. Now that is... You can feel the, the air coming out of that. Fantastic. It doesn't get hot. Um, I usually have that on about half. Pump, pumping out 5 amps and it's it's fine, doesn't get warm. None of the FETs get warm, you've got loads of air circulation around there so the final touch because I'm sh sh the final touch because I'm just shit at the de designing I put a bit of captain tape around the top there just to seal it 100% there's no air, put, air output through that but you know it just holds it on properly that's all. Jobs are good and Put out a help thing on Patreon. <laughs> Next thing I know, as he's turned up and he's 30 foot up the f tree, that you're gonna. Oh, he said if he dies, he wants to put it on YouTube. <laughs>